This LOS is Calculate and Interpret Leverage and Coverage Ratios. Evaluating Solvency, Leverage and Coverage Ratios. So here we've got the solvency ratios, leverage here at the top, and our coverage ratios here. So we've given the numerator uh, and the denominator, okay? So if we look at some of the leverage ratios, these should be familiar to us at this point. Debt to asset ratio, the numerator is total debt, and there's a little note there, A, debt is defined as the sum of interest bearing short-term and long-term debt, okay? So debt to assets, that's, it's pretty much giving you the numerator and the denominator in the uh, title of the ratio, debt to assets. So the numerator is total debt, denominator is total assets. Debt to capital, numerator total debt, denominator total debt, plus total shareholders equity. Debt to equity ratio, numerator total debt, denominator total shareholders equity. And the financial leverage ratio, you should recall that from the DuPont that uh, it's average total assets over average equity. We say uh, uh, assets over equity often, we see that as. Now we're getting into some coverage ratios. Uh, interest coverage ratio should be one that's easy to remember. It's just the EBIT over interest. And remembering from the income statement, we have earnings before interest and taxes, and then it's minus interest. So the numerator and the denominator uh, are, are, uh, are in place. You just take EBIT and divide it by interest and you've got your interest coverage ratio. So that's always an easy one to remember. But this is the one that comes up that uh, sometimes not familiar to candidates and students. It's not seen as often in uh, lower level college or university courses is the fixed charge coverage ratio. And it's easy. All we're doing is adding the lease payments to the numerator of the interest coverage ratio and adding the lease payments to the denominator. So we have, if you can remember, the interest coverage ratio, EBIT, divided by interest, it's easy to remember the fixed charge coverage ratio. Just add the lease payments to the numerator and add the lease payments to the denominator, okay? So we'll just do one practice question to finish this LOS. So we're given the following information about a company. We've got short-term borrowings, current portion of long-term interest-bearing debt, long-term interest-bearing debt, total shareholders equity, EBIT, interest payments, and then here we have the operating lease payments, okay? So we've got 2010 and 2011. It says, what is the most appropriate conclusion an analyst can make about the solvency of the company? Solvency has A, improved because the debt to equity ratio decreased, B, deteriorated because the debt to equity ratio increased, or C, improved because the fixed charge coverage ratio increased. Okay, a good little review of some ratios. So first of all, it's not asking for it, but the interest coverage ratio, just remember, is EBIT divided by the interest payments, which is always easy because on the income statement, you've got your earnings before interest and taxes, and then you minus the interest. So the interest coverage ratio, you've got your numerator and denominator, they just flow in order. And then let's start with the fixed coverage ratio. As I said, all what we're doing for that is adding the lease payments to the numerator and adding the lease payments to the denominator. So here they're giving us EBIT and they're giving us the interest payments. So it's fairly easy for 2010, we can see 3,800 plus the lease payments, 800 divided by 837, which is the interest payments plus the 800, we get 2.81. Then for 2011, we have EBIT 3850 plus the operating lease payments, hasn't changed the payments, 800, divided by interest payments, 855, plus 800, and we get the same number, 2.81. So there's been no change in the fixed uh, charge coverage ratio, okay? So we'll jump up to the debt to equity ratio. The formula is total debt divided by total equity. And this question was fairly easy. They didn't give us any red herring information. Everything was pretty easily uh, presented to us. We have our short-term borrowings, which is debt current portion of long-term interest bearing, clearly that's debt, and long-term interest bearing debt. So that's our debt, and here's our equity. So that's our debt, and here's our equity. So fairly easy. For 2010, 5,400 plus 1,200 plus 9,000 divided by 2,175, and we get it rounds to 74%. For 2010, 2,240 plus 2,000 plus 12,000 divided by 23,250, and it's 
So our debt to equity has gone down. The ratio has decreased and the company has less financial risk. It's more solvent. So A is correct. The debt to equity decreased, thereby improving solvency. And uh, that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.